My name is Sylvia. I am a 38 year old housewife working part time. My only daughter, Melody, graduated from college last year and moved out. So now, I live with my 50 year old husband, Victor. Now that I've finished raising Melody, I have a little more time on my hands these days. But then, my life took an unexpected turn. My husband and I met on a blind date. We liked each other from the first day. Things went quickly and we got married. Soon, we were blessed with a daughter. Even though it was my first time raising a child, I was determined to do my best for her. I quit my job at the same time as her birth and became a stay at home mom. I did all the housework and childcare by myself. My husband was not at all supportive. If he finished work early, he would go out for drinking, and on his days off, he would go out for fun. If not, he just sits around in his room doing nothing. And yet, he had this kind of attitude towards me. Housewives are easy, you know. You can enjoy yourself and live for free. He's so out of touch with the times. I've thought about divorcing him, of course. But I didn't want to divorce him just because he was uncooperative and had a nasty tongue. Besides, it would be better for my daughter if both parents were together. So I changed my point of view a little. I would raise my daughter on my own without relying on my husband. He's only good for bringing in the paycheck. And that worked for a while. But when my daughter started middle school, my husband started taking money out of the house. I have to pay for company equipment. I have to pay for business entertainment. Under the guise of that, he often took a large amount of money from me. Naturally, the family finances were strained. So I started working part time to help out. Still, my husband complains to me about anything. Don't try to talk to me about work. You're just a part timer. What kind of work can a woman do? It's just as easy as playing. He said things like this to me. He probably has no respect for women in general. I didn't outwardly oppose it. But I was going to pay him back someday. Late one winter night, the house phone rang. I picked up the phone to find it was my uncle, my mother's brother. He told me that my mother had been rushed to the hospital by ambulance and was in critical condition. He gave me the name of the hospital and I got ready to go. I woke up my sleeping husband. I begged my reluctant husband to get a car and we drove to the hospital. My mother had been living alone since my father passed away a few years before. My father was a big, strong, and reliable man. I loved my mother who smiled peacefully next to him. My father died after several years of illness. But even after my father's death, I could always see my father next to my mother, who lived modestly, to listen to my worries about my husband's words and actions. I can't believe my mother might be gone soon. I was sitting in the passenger seat, praying for her to hang on. When we arrived at the hospital room, my uncle and some other relatives were there. According to what I heard, my mother suddenly woke up in the middle of the night with chest pains. Unable to decide whether to call an ambulance or not, she called my uncle. She finally called an ambulance after my uncle strongly advised her to do so. My uncle, who lived nearby, immediately went to my mother's house. He also accompanied my mother to the emergency room. He called me as soon as he found out where they were taking her. I can never thank my uncle enough. My mother, lying in bed, was already unconscious. I could not speak to her, but I called out to her. The doctor who examined my mother 
told me that it would be a while before she would be in a critical situation again. My relatives and I called out to her and encouraged her. Then, we all started talking about arrangements that would need to be made. Suddenly, I heard a voice complaining. Huh, it's finally over. You called me up in the middle of the night and then wasted my time. Hey, hey, let's go home. It was my husband's voice. He was sitting in a chair in the corner of the room, showing his frustration. I was so preoccupied with my mother that I forgot he was there. Go ahead. Please go home without me. Although my mother is not conscious, it is possible that she can hear my husband's voice. If he keeps saying any more nasty words, I want him to get the hell out of there. Then my husband sighed, exaggeratedly, and said, Huh, she made me waste my time for what? She doesn't even have much money to leave. Well, she was a useless old hag until the very end, wasn't she? After he left, everyone was concerned and worried about me. I took a deep breath, calmed down, and told them, Thanks. I'm alright. Don't worry. I've decided to divorce him. I returned home just as my husband left for work, and I immediately packed a box of clothes for immediate needs. I made a delivery to my uncle's house and left home with my personal belongings. To tell the truth, I had been secretly planning to divorce my husband when he reached retirement age in a few years. But my husband's comment at the hospital made me decide to accelerate the schedule. I can't live under the same roof as a person who insults my mother like that. I took a room at a business hotel for the time being. Then, I contacted the lawyer I had been consulting for some time. That night, I received a call on my cell phone from my husband. Hey, why aren't you home? Your mom's still in the hospital, right? You don't have to take care of her, do you? I mean, the funeral's not even here yet, is it? Why don't you come home and cook dinner? Please leave me alone. I won't come home anymore. Victor, I'm divorcing you. Hearing that, my husband snickered. Huh? If you can do it, do it. You're just a housewife with a part-time job. And he hung up the phone. A few days later, however, he called again. He was a completely different man. What is this? What are these divorce papers and alimony demands? His voice was filled with impatience. Contrary to my husband, I was calm. I told you. I said I will divorce you. And the alimony is justified for the mental anguish I've suffered from you. What? What are you talking about? I've been through those horrible things you've ever said to me. I documented it in my diary and on my blog. My lawyer said that would be good evidence. What? Evidence? I guess he had no idea that I was working toward a divorce behind his back. Anyway, any further communications about the divorce would have to come through the lawyer. That was all I said and hung up the phone. A short time later, my husband and I finalized the divorce. Our savings of $200,000 will be divided among us. But his share was equal to the amount of alimony for the harassment. So we agreed that I would get all the savings. Of course, my husband did not accept these terms from the beginning. There is no such thing as a wife's share. I earned it. If you take over your useless mother's house, it's mine too. The lawyer calmly explained the situation each time to my husband. If we have to go to mediation or court, it will cost a lot of money. Is that what you want? By hinting about the money, 
my lawyer silenced my husband. When everything was finally settled, he said, "You took all my money, you bitch. Are you all right?" The lawyer looked at me with a bitter face and said he was concerned about me, but it didn't hurt me at all. My husband's words sounded like the howl of the loser. Less than two months after the divorce was finalized, my mother took her last breath. I served as a chief mourner with the help of my relatives. A short time later, I received a call from my uncle and his wife. They wanted to see me as soon as possible. I was a little nervous and went to the restaurant when we were meeting. Once we seated, my uncle got right down to business. Actually, I got a call from Victor wanting to borrow money. I knew about your divorce and how it happened. So if I had picked up the phone, I would have immediately yelled at him and hung up. But instead of me, my wife picked up the phone. Yes, yes, I was the one who talked to Victor. I knew what was going on with you and Victor. Also. I had heard about his outburst in the hospital room, you know. So I had no intention of lending him money to begin with. But I was curious about what he had to say. I pretended to be sympathetic and asked him why he didn't have the money, pretending to be fooled. Great job, Auntie. But seriously, why? Why does he need it, money? I wondered. Sure, I got the couple's savings after the divorce, but my ex-husband has a job, so he should be getting paid, all right. And you know, he gambled away his paycheck. Whenever he ran short of money, he would borrow money from consumer credit companies. Eventually, he ran out of money, and the credit companies garnished his salary. And when his boss found out. That he was in debt, Victor took early retirement. Whoa, what a mess! But didn't he receive severe pay, even though he retired early? Well, what is it? I guess it's called an an advanced payment system, isn't it? It was added to his salary and bonus a long time ago. Moreover. The severance pay he received in advance was based on the amount he would have received if he worked until retirement. But Victor retired early, so he had to pay the difference when he quit. He couldn't borrow any more money from consumer loans, and he can't find a job. So that was the reason for his financial trouble. I didn't know he was taking advantage of the advance payment plan. I vaguely remember that he stopped showing me his pay stubs at some point. I'm sure that was when he started using the advance payment system. So, after listening to what he had to say, I said to him, "Oh my gosh, let me talk to my husband about it." And hung up the phone. You know, my aunt laughed like she was entertained. Later, I found out that my ex-husband had called not only my uncle but also all my relatives and asked them to lend him money. How could any of my relatives lend money to him? Even the people who came to the wake and the farewell ceremony knew about his outburst at the hospital. I have no sympathy for my ex-husband. I guess he ran out of people to turn to. One day, an unknown number called my cell phone. Hey, it's been a while. How's things? That was my ex-husband. A voice like I'd never heard when we were married. I got goosebumps from the sound of his sticky voice. I went to see your mom's house. They're doing construction. Are you going to live in it after the renovation? No, I'm renting it out. To tell you the truth, 
I would have lived there myself. But my ex-husband knew where it was, and I thought it would be dangerous, so I decided not to. I don't even want to give him the whole backstory. Then where do you live now? I would never tell you. Well, it's a condo with a concierge at the entrance where you can't just walk in. What? A condo? My ex-husband is speechless with surprise. No wonder. I inherited a fortune from my mother that was way out of proportion to the alimony I received. The story goes back to when my father passed away a few years ago. He was a tax account, and during his illness, he asked a colleague in his profession to take care of my mother and my inheritance. I was already concerned about my ex-husband's money management when my father died. So, I had offered to disinherit. My mother inherited my father's huge estate without my ex-husband's knowledge. Back then, when my ex-husband asked about my father's inheritance, I lied to him. I told him that my father's inheritance was negative because of the mortgage on the house, so I renounced it. My ex-husband seemed to be easily conceived and didn't ask me about the inheritance anymore. And now I have inherited everything my father left from my mother. Even if my ex-husband tried to touch it, it's safe because we are divorced. My mother was a modest woman who liked to wear a simple, high-quality cloth that lasted a long time. That's why I think my ex-husband assumed that my mother was poor. He had no idea of my intentions or where the money came from. I am not going to tell him. If you can afford a condo, why don't you lend me some money? Right, Sylvia? Please. We even had a child together. The only thing I'm grateful for is that I met Melody. But that's all. You left me to raise her alone. You've always looked down on me. And the time we spent together as a couple was just unbearable. Do you really think I'd help you? Well, let's let bygones be bygones and get back together again. Absolutely not. Besides, you are a full-time employee, right? You get paid well, right? Unlike a part-timer like me. And if you work for a few more years, you'll get a retirement bonus, right? What? Um, what? Anything wrong? You are getting a retirement bonus. Right? You'd better use it wisely. Well then, goodbye. I finished what I wanted to say and hung up the phone. I pretended I didn't know about his financial crisis. I felt ashamed of myself that I used to be married to that guy. I set the number he called to block all incoming calls. One day, about six months later, my daughter Melody came to stay with me. Mom, I love your new place. I wish I could live in a house like this someday. She said as she looked around my room, which was a little too big for a one-person house. Melody, your place is nice too. You said you like it, didn't you? That's true. But I can't afford this kind of room with my salary. Well, it's only my first year though. She takes a sip of her after-dinner coffee and smiles wryly. Seeing her smile makes me feel peaceful inside. My ex-husband's rarely mentioned between us. Mom? Actually, there is someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, really? You have a boyfriend? What's he like? Well, you know, don't laugh, but he's a tax attorney. <laughs> what? A tax attorney? Yeah. Can you believe? And there is more. One day, 
I found a book on his bookshelf, and it was the one Grandpa wrote. I thought it was fate, you know. Well, Melody, what a nice coincidence! Grandpa must be very happy. My daughter smiles shyly. I look forward to the day when I see her future husband standing next to her with a gentle smile.